My name is Austin Bell. I'm a graduate research assistant at the University of Minnesota, and this is a hands-on activity demonstration of how to calculate the number, surface area, and mass of particles. It was developed with Pete Rayner, a professor at the University of Minnesota, and with the help of students at Dakota County Technical College. For this activity, you will need three sets of marbles, each with a diameter of two inches, one inch, or a half inch. You will also need rulers or calipers in order to measure the diameter of the marble and digital or analog balances along with plastic cups in order to measure the mass. The class should split into small groups with each group at a different station with a different diameter of marble. The learners should first count the total number of marbles at each station. After learners count the marbles, they should record how many marbles were at each station. In our example, there were 40 marbles at the first station, 5 marbles at the second station, and 1 marble at the third station. Learners should then measure the diameter of the three marble sizes using a ruler or a caliper. As expected, the marbles at our first station are about a half inch in diameter. The marbles at the second station are about an inch in diameter. And the marbles at the third station are about two inches in diameter. We then record our marble diameter here. Surface area is calculated by taking the product of pi times diameter squared and then multiplying this number by the total number of marbles at each station. Using this equation for the first station, we would multiply the number of marbles, in this case 40, times the product of pi times half inch squared, and we would end up with a surface area of 31.4 square inches. At the second station, we multiply 5 marbles by the product of pi times 1 inch squared, which gives us a surface area of 15.7 square inches. At the third station, we multiply the 1 marble times the product of pi times 2 inches squared, which gives us a surface area of 12.6 square inches. In order to measure the mass of the marbles, learners will first need to know the mass of the dish that they're putting the marbles in. In our example, the dish is 2.4 grams. Then they will measure the combined mass of the marbles in the dish. In our example, the combined mass for station 1 was 114.51 grams. At the second station, the combined mass was 97.47 grams. And at the third station, the combined mass was 144.08 grams. After these masses have been recorded, learners should then subtract the mass of the plastic dish from their combined mass in order to determine the mass of just the marbles. In our example, the mass of the plastic dish was 2.4 grams. Therefore, for the first station, we subtract 2.4 grams from our combined mass of 114.51 grams. From this, we can determine the mass of just the half-inch marbles is 112.11 grams. For station 2, we would subtract 2.4 grams from our combined mass of 97.32 grams. This gives us a mass of 94.92 grams for the 1-inch marbles. And for the third station, we would subtract 2.4 grams from the combined mass of 144.08 grams, and this would give us a total of 141.68 grams for the 2-inch marble. In our written instructions, we provide a table where students can record the results. So far, we can enter the diameter, number, surface area, and mass that corresponds to each station.
Next, learners should calculate the number ratio for each station using the largest diameter marble in the denominator as the reference group. In our example, the largest diameter marble was 2 inches, and we only had one marble of this size. We would then compare our first station, which had 40 half-inch marbles, to the one marble in our reference group. This gives us a number ratio of 40. Next, we would compare our five marbles at station 2 to the reference group of one marble. This gives us a number ratio of 5. Lastly, we compare the one marble at the third station to itself, since it is the reference group. This gives us a number ratio of 1. We then enter these number ratios into our table. Learners should calculate the surface area ratio in a similar fashion, using the group of marbles with the largest diameter as a reference. In our case, the largest marble diameter was 2 inches, which had a surface area of 12.6 square inches. We then calculate the surface area ratio for the first group by dividing the surface area for the half-inch group, which was 31.4 square inches, by the reference group, which was 12.6 square inches. This gives us a surface area ratio of 2.49. For our second station, we divide the surface area of the 1-inch group, which was 15.7 square inches, by the reference group of 12.6 square inches. This gives us a surface area ratio of 1.25. And for the third station, we would divide the surface area of the 2-inch marble, which was 12.6 square inches, by itself, which gives us a surface area ratio of 1. We can then add these surface area ratios into our table. The last calculation that learners will perform is the mass ratio. Much like the other two ratio examples, the largest diameter group should be used as a reference. In our case, the largest diameter was 2 inches, which had a mass of 141.68 grams. For the first station, the half-inch marbles weighed 112.11 grams, which after divided by the reference group of 141.68 grams, gives us a mass ratio of 0 0.79. The second station of 1-inch marbles had a mass of 94.92 grams, which divided by 141.68 grams gives us a mass ratio of 0 0.67. And our third station, with the 2-inch marble, had a mass of 141.68 grams, which when divided by itself gives us a mass ratio of 1. Learners should then enter in these mass ratios into the table provided. After the table is completely filled out, we can observe some of the relationships between marble sizes, counts, surface area, and mass. For example, although the half-inch marbles have the highest count, each individual marble contributes less to its overall surface area and mass than the 2-inch marble. Hopefully this video helps you to understand how to calculate and interpret the number, surface area, and mass. Thank you for watching. This lesson has been created by the Midwest Emerging Technologies Public Health and Safety Training Program, otherwise known as METFAST, which is a collaboration between the University of Minnesota School of Public Health, the University of Iowa College of Public Health, and Dakota County Technical College. The content of this lesson is solely the responsibility of the developers and does not necessarily represent the official views of the National Institutes of Health.